Oh, you came, did you? You got rid of your husband. Ben called me, sounded horrible. Ben, Ben called me, says, where's my wife? I said, I'm not her, I'm not her keep, no, he didn't say that. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Where's Evelyn? All right, 231, Sister Adrian, right? Y'all might know this, right? I hope you do. Let's stand. Forgot my evangelistic song leading days. All right. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. Brother Jesse, we have a prayer list. I don't have one with me. Brother Hanson uh, wasn't able to leave uh, Christine tonight and uh, pray for Ben. He's still under the weather. Um, and the rest of them, I have no idea where they are. <laughs> so praise the Lord. I'm glad you're here. Amen. Amen. I'm glad at my age I can still be here. Amen. Amen. And everything give thanks for this is, all right, so are you giving thanks this morning, or tonight? Okay, this is the will of God that you do that, and make sure that, uh, you know, you let him know, thank you, Lord, that I still have breath in my body and still able to get up. There's a lot of people that can't. Amen. 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 There's a lot of people who would love to switch with you tonight, yeah, get out of the hospital, get out of that bed, get, you know, thank God for it. Yeah. Now. Some of y'all might not know about it. There's a wedding getting ready to take place. Serena and I are finally going to get no, just <laughs> Well, Billy, I hope you're going. <laughs> um, I, guess, I guess I'm as excited as Tim, that Tim is, um, he finally ran into something he couldn't run away from. Amen. <laughs> no, it's, it's been my pleasure and my joy to be able to sit down and talk with them and realize where their heart is and what they want to do. And they just want to magnify God in their life and let him be exalted and, and praised for it. 
uh, believe me, it took God, and you tell me that God didn't use a situation and put it in place, uh, then you don't know God. Amen. Amen. But I, I'm excited for, I think I'm more excited about them getting married than maybe they are at times. But I, I'm just elated for them. I, I really, I wish that, well, never mind. I started out that young. Amen. I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ until I was, uh, Serena, 30, 32, 31, I don't know. Anyway, all right, on sickness, anybody got anything to add to sickness? Sickness. No? Are y'all here tonight? Okay. Just talk to me. I can't see or hear at times. All right. Anybody need to add anything? On, nothing on sickness. Y'all all well. If they're all well, why aren't they here? Is that a good question? Amen. <laughs> what would she say? Who said that, Elizabeth? Oh, are you going to run the aisle now? Is that what you, <laughs> the ones. <laughs> so, pray for, um, if if you would, uh, pray for Jarrett. He lost his grandpa, and uh, you know, they're very close. Um, yeah, I don't know whether he's traveling up to, uh, where are they from, New York, Arizona? Oh, good night. I wouldn't drive there. I hope I don't even have to go there. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not used to this, Brother Ken, so I normally have somebody doing this. Answer prayer. Anybody get an answer to prayer? Amen, brother. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. Amen. See, we, we get to ourselves in a situation where well, you know, I, I made it home driving. Yeah, what a blessing that was. No, we don't do that. We just say, yeah, I just made it home. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you wouldn't have made it home. God kept, I tell you what you want to do. You want to pray for the nation of Israel. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. God said, you better keep your hands off my people. And they're playing with, they're playing with the bad stuff there. And it might just sort of kick it. You know what I mean? Maybe we'll get a boost. I won't get you married real quick just before the rapture comes. <laughs> That'd be a nice thing to happen, wouldn't it? You got anywhere you want to go that the rapture would not help you with? Okay. I can't figure anything for me either. So um, anyway, don't forget to pray for others. Um, I've, I've got Israel right there in front of it. Brother uh, Hunter in the Philippines. Now, they're, in, uh, I think, en route to uh, Tennessee. Uh, no, excuse me, uh, Arkansas. They're en route to there, and they're going to get their trailer to bring it back. And so you be in prayer for uh, him, Brother uh, Howard and Sister Vicki. Um, Okay. Um, anything else? Anybody got anything? Unspoken? Go ahead. I totally understand that. I, I listened to him while he was singing tonight. And that's called, I'm not going to let something like that pull me down that I won't lift my voice up for God. And uh, God will God'll take care of that thing and he'll restore it. But, it, you know, the unfortunate thing sometimes, our time is not his timing. And I, I know Brother Ken knows what he's doing. And by the way, there's books out there. They're not free. Uh, you have to give me $50, and then I'll split it with Ken. <laughs> no, but there's some stuff out there. Really good reads are really good stuff. 
uh, you can get, Sister Jackie, you had a, a, an unspoken? You, you negative all your bank accounts. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> I'm a rich, broke person. <laughs> no, I understand what she's saying. You know, we've been praying about something. Uh, I watched, Chuck, you've seen that before, how people do that. Uh, it, it just fires me up when... They take a company and they use their professional equipment and they do everything right and then people just takes 10 years to pay you and that's wrong because you know what, you got to pay your coworkers, the people that work for you, but uh, she's keeping a great attitude about it, so be in prayer, God, take care of that. And then here's another good prayer for it, God, sick them if they don't. Yeah. Amen, put God on them, man. I mean, don't, can God do anything? Put God on them. Hey, Lord, I did everything in the right way, the faith, and been there, did my job, and my workers deserve to be paid. Amen. Labor's worthy of us. Thank you. All right. Um, upcoming events. Um, somebody named Tim and Rebecca. You all know them? What do you got, Chuck? Gloria um, had somewhat of a stroke. Am I, am I telling it right, Sherry? Yes. And it's left her to where she can't do certain things. Um, she's been a, a hairstylist for years and years and really pretty good at it. Um, and all of a sudden, she can't do what she used to do. And as, as our sweet government will do, they'll give everybody money, but people that are in the United States and need it. But, but uh, pray for her. I, I mean, she's got a lot of decisions to make, and she lives in a, that home she's got. That's a beautiful place, backs right up to the water. Um, but you pray for her that uh, God will help her with that. Okay? Okay. Um, who are you? What's your name? You know, he's one of my favorite people. I'm trying to work on you yet. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Her and I and my grandson, she took care of my grandson. That's why he turned out to be a brat. No, no. No, she spoiled the life out of him. I'm serious. But she had this little thing she would do. She'd get Joseph, say, Granddaddy, pizza. No, not pizza, Chick-fil-A and ice cream. Well, lo and behold, this lady loves ice cream. <laughs> and Chick-fil-A. And, well, I better ride with him, make sure he's okay. <laughs> no, I enjoyed it. Joseph enjoyed it. it uh, you know, you were a blessing to my grandson. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to thank the Lord for something um, my grandson has autism, but it, it's made him so sweet. He comes in, sits with us, and he loves his, his, his nena. He loves her, and he'll come in and sit down, and, and I'll say, Joseph, where's my kiss? And he'll walk up and kiss me on my forehead, and he'll go over to her and hug her and kiss her. And 
I, I don't know about autism. I don't know anything about all, none of that. But I wouldn't change him. I wouldn't change him. I love him so much. And I thank God for him. And I know that she does too. And, uh, but her and Ben, <laughs> Joseph would get in between them. <laughs> and he'd want her to hug him. <laughs> and Ben would get jealous. <laughs> I'm telling on you, Ben. I hope you're not watching. But anyway, on the 14th of this month, uh, Tim and Rebecca will be uh, getting married. I hope you can attend. I hope you plan on attending. Uh, you say why? Well, to encourage them, celebrate it with them. Amen. It, it'll, it'll be a blessing. And you can tell I don't do this very often. So is there anything else that I'm missing? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. That's a blessing. You know, when, when you start to praise him for him doing something, you, you, you can see the father going, oh, just leaning down going, that, that's what I like. Listen, we don't have anything to complain about. Somebody died for us and we were unworthy, according to Romans chapter 5. Amen? Unworthy of that. He watches over us day by day. He gives us the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us gave us a Bible that we can know that we have the Word of God and His promises are in there. What do we have to complain about? Amen. You know what he said? The joy of the Lord is my salvation. Listen, brethren, you ought to have, hey, Christians ought to be happy. Amen. You know, most of them walk around and got their chin hanging down so long that they scrape the skin off of it. What do you got to complain about? God is your Father <laughs> and He's your... Son is your Savior, and one day you're going to be so rich you won't be able to talk to yourself. Amen. Streets of gold, anybody? Hey, Trump's a pretty rich man, right? Where's his gold at? Come on. Hey, the Bible says let everything have breath. Could we do it a little bit better than that? Thank you. You got breath in you. Listen. God gives it to me. Next week, I'll be 80 years old. You married an old man, woman. <laughs> I robbed the cradle. But no, listen. What a blessing. I'd have probably been dead 20 years ago if I hadn't gotten saved and started to walk with God. Amen? All right, is there anything else? Don't forget... On the 14th, upcoming events on the 15th, uh, um, we have to vote on missionary Jeff Williams, uh, play practice, street preaching on October the uh, 21st. Um, let's see, uh, October the 28th, is this the right, Amanda, pumpkin patch? Only thing I like is pumpkin pie. <laughs> Now, where, when is this? I'm sorry. So you got to lock in? You're going to lock the kids up? Okay, that's good. <laughs> is that the 28th, the pumpkin patch? Okay, I, I got it down here. So don't forget that. Um, there's a lot going on, and uh, I, I want to encourage moms and dads, make sure your child gets in, involved in that. Because, you know, those things that you ins instill in them that are important and get them a closer walk with God, that's only going to enhance your relationship and help you. Uh, I, I've heard people say, well, my kid was bad, so I made him stay home from church. Um, excuse me? I think they, they'll learn something in church and get something from God. They'll know that, listen, 
I need to walk with God. You have a mom and dad that loves God. You're a blessed young person. Amen. It takes a relationship. Amen. All right. I don't want to go too much longer on this. We have uh, anybody for salvation. Now, I did have an opportunity. Um, uh, Brother David Borman has some issues going on physical um, that he has to make some decisions on. So if you'd be in prayer, I talked with him the other night on the way home from, uh, from we were working up here or doing something. And I told him we'd be praying for him. So pray for David Borman. God, give him some wisdom whether he's going to need an op operation or God says, no, I got this. We'll take care of it. Um, his cousin, that uh, she's 80 years old. This is a guy I told you about that calls me all the time and asks me to pray. I've led about five or six people to the Lord. In fact, my wife and I were doing something one day, and his sister was passing away. She, she was getting ready to go home. She literally called me from the place that she was at and said, Preacher, you remember me? I said, Certainly I remember you. She said, Am I sealed and saved? I'm all right, right? I, I said the prayer, and I meant it, and I said, well, either God's a liar or the devil that's trying to tell you you aren't is. Yeah. Yeah. And God is not a man that he should lie, neither son of man that he should repent. Amen? Amen. We have a God who says, I can. Amen. Amen? And that lady with him, whoop, honey, about five days later, slipped into glory, and um, I've led his 80-year-old aunt just last week or two. To the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. she said, I'm a Catholic. I said, God saves Catholics. Yeah. Amen. Hey, whosoever will, let him come. <laughs> so God does. But pray for Brother David. He needs your prayer. He, he would cherish your prayer. Uh, Sister Mary has an unspoken. She needs prayer with, right? Okay. Can she hear me? Anything else? We need to get rolling here. I'm going to let Brother Ken do something tonight. Anybody got anything else at all? Okay. Um, Adrian's back. I can't see around this thing. There she is. <laughs> all right. Just give me another. Anybody got a favorite song? Come on. Quit being bashful. No. What is it? 450. Four? Four Sounds like a price of a 450. What is it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Are we there? You're probably there before I am. This is hard to walk around, baby. <laughs> All right. We ready? Let's stand. Take a deep breath, Jason. Let her out. Okay, thank you. There will never Something wonderful, wonderful. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me. Something wonderful, wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is. The love of God and Christ and love of faith. Love of 
of Jesus, something wonderful, wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to let Brother Ken come up, and I'm going to leave this mic up here for you. Is that, is that what you want, Bill? Love of Jesus is wonderful, amen. For 18 years, I wasn't in that love. But I, I really appreciate the decorations. I didn't realize, you know, but no, I'm just kidding. But uh, it's going to be a good day, Saturday, amen. It's exciting, it really is. All right, if you will take your Bibles tonight. And I go to the book of Matthew, go to the book of Matthew 25 and Matthew 5, Matthew 25, and then Matthew 5. And I don't know, I guess we got, you got that under control. If you have any questions about what's on the uh, table, see my wife. Uh, if you ask me, I'll go see my wife. Uh, I wrote some books, but see my wife. And <laughs> but if you have questions about what's in the books, all right, yeah, I can, I can answer that, Lord willing. And if I don't know, then I'll just say I don't know. But uh, anyway, it is good to be here. It's good to be saved. And um, uh, just good. God's good. Amen. Uh, Matthew 25, I guess I better get there, and I know that doctrinally this is not a passage that doctrinally would be for you and I, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a phrase in there and kind of go off from that, but Matthew 25, and we'll start in verse 1, Matthew 25, and verse 1, the Bible says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps, went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, took no oil in them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And this is what I want you to notice. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Trimmed their lamps. Now go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. And let's look at verse 14. Matthew 5 and verse 14, the Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let's pray. Father, I pray now that you would bless uh, this message, Lord. God, guide the words of my mouth. And God, uh, I pray that you, Lord, would meet with us tonight. God, that you would draw us nearer to thee. God, thou knowest the needs here tonight. I do not. And God, I would not be able to meet those needs anyway. God, we need you. And I pray, Lord God, that you would clear our minds from the distractions of this life. And God, I pray that you would bless and minister 
and work and move in our midst tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. And uh, Bob said, let your light shine before men uh, that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. You know, it's an amazing age in which we live. Um, you can order and buy from Amazon or hardware stores, but you can get flashlights now that are brighter than were on the cop cars 40 years ago. They have the old six volt, uh, you know, up in the corner, you know, and they shine them and have this round spotlight. And it worked, it worked. But you can get a, a, a flashlight in your hand uh, that's brighter than those now. I mean, just, you know, and blind you. It really is amazing. Um, about two years ago, we were up in Wisconsin, and the headlights on our 1994 Winnebago were not the brightest. Matter of fact, on a rainy night, you didn't know if your headlights were on or not. <laughs> it was like, where are we? <laughs> you know. And they ordered and put in these, these LED lights. And there's, I think, four rows of five LEDs. And I'm like, well, we'll see how this does. And it was getting dusk. And uh, about a half a mile away was a warehouse uh, from the church where they were working on it. The RV was, was pointing that way. And they were all in. They said, all right, try them. And I turned them on. Boom. And I mean, it was like, wow. I mean, I literally am concerned when I'm driving, I want to make sure they're not on a high beam. Because if they are, whoever's coming towards me are going to be blinded. I mean, they are DOT approved, you know, and I've got them like pointing like this. I mean, it's just like that. And it's like, whoa, I like it. As I get older, you know, it's like, Nice. All right, I can see this is good. I can drive at night for another five years. You know, this is good, you know. But I mean, they're, they're bright. But, uh, you know, in the Bible, they didn't have that. They had lamps. And, uh, you know, it, it's amusing to watch when I was watching this show and there was, uh, uh, they had these young, young people on. And they gave them a street map, old-fashioned paper, fold-out street map. And they said, fold it up. <laughs> there's no way. Which, if you never tried to fold one of those up, there's an art to it, you know. But nevertheless, I used to be a traveling salesman, and I was very familiar with those kind of maps. I got, you know, I got to use them, you know. And then there was one where they had an old uh, rotary phone, and they said, and it was hooked up, and they said, uh, call this number. And they didn't know how to do it. They're like, uh, um, you know, they're ding and they didn't know how to. Now give them an electronic device that I've had for two years and still don't know how to use it. And they've got it worked out in five minutes. I mean, there's a, what you just do this, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, that's nice, you know. I mean, you know, so, I mean, that, that's it. But in the Bible, they had lamps. In the Bible, they don't have wax candles. Wax candles go back to Egypt and come up through Rome. But in the Bible, it's oil. It's oil lamps. And it was olive oil. And a, a lamp now, for those of you young people that may not know, might know, I don't know. But nevertheless, they've got a bowl that holds oil. And then there's a a metal uh, receptacle that screws on that has a wick 
a generally cotton wick. And that wick wicks. He said, what do you mean it wicks? Well, it goes into the oil, and that oil travels up that wick. It goes up the top, and then you light it. And you light that wick, and then there's a globe, glass, that goes over it, and you put on it, and you turn it, and it, it gets bright, and it, it sends out light. That is an oil lamp. In the Bible, there was the candlestick, and it had seven branches, and it had olive oil in those branches, and they had a wick, and they would light that wick, and it gave light. And the candle is the flame. It's very important. The Bible says, the Lord will light my candle. And that's the light. That's the flame. And I want to preach tonight on the subject of have you trimmed your lamp lately? Have you trimmed your lamp lately? Now, the lost are, in, are a lamp with no oil. They don't have any oil. And there's no light. There's no candle. They're, they're in darkness. But when you got saved, the Lord came into your body. The Bible says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What? Know you not your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost which you have a God and ye are not your own. Glorify God therefore your body and your spirit which are God's. God came into you and your light you were lit by God. Now you're, chil you're children of light. And you'd let that light shine in a very dark world. And we are in, now I know the world's always been dark, but we are in very, very dark times. And they're getting darker all the time. And what's blessed when pastor was up here rejoicing, I mean, uh, this isn't in my notes, but uh, I, we are, are blessed. I mean, to be saved, you're blessed. I, I understand that, but as Christianity is going apostate and it is in a real mess, we are not better than anybody else, but we are blessed. We know where the Word of God is. There's not very many nowadays that know where the Word of God is. And not only do we know where the Word of God is, we know what salvation is, we know we're saved, we know where we're going when we die, we still believe in hell, we still, I mean, on and on and on. I mean, we know what's going on in the world. We don't have to be living on Jack Daniels or Libraham or Valium or whatever. I mean, we can pillow our head at night knowing that God has it all under control. That is a blessing. There's no doubt about that. And uh, But you uh, are to let your light so shine uh, before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And um, let, let, me, let me give some. Go to Go to Ephesians 5. Look at Ephesians 5, which I've already basically said this, but look at Ephesians 5 and verse 8. The Bible says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And you're to walk in the light. You're to let the light shine. Now go to Exodus chapter 27. Exodus 27. And look at Exodus 27. And look at verse 20. Now that, that candlestick 
was to use olive oil. And that's what it was to use to burn the light, to have the, have the, uh, the, the light candles going. And of course, under Eli, it went out. But nevertheless, look at verse 20. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. Now, in, as a type, you are an olive. You are not a grape. <laughs> what? You're not a grape. The Bible says the Lord is going to be tramping out the grapes. In the book of Revelation, he's stomping and treading the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. You're not a grape, you're an olive. <laughs> what do you mean? You're going to shine brightest. And the oil is going to flow the most. When you get beaten. I don't like that. But it's in the trials. It's when you're getting beaten and just smashed that the oil begins to flow and that flame gets brighter and the Lord's being glorified and the light shining. And we don't like being beat. But that's the way the Lord flows through us. That's the way the light shines. Years ago, many, many years ago, there was a very wicked ruler by the name of Nero. Nero would have parties on his veranda. Very nice, very ornate. He was the ruler. He was the king. And around that perimeter of his veranda was posts. And on those posts at dusk, there would be Christians that had been wrapped in animal skins and dipped in tar and pitch. And as it began to get dark, they wanted light. So they lit those Christians on fire and they shed light on his party and proceedings. Their light still shines tonight when you read about what they went through and the grace that God gave them and they're dying being burnt for Jesus Christ. Not only did they shed light physically, but they shed a great spiritual light as they burned and were killed because they were a Christian. Their light was shining. You're to let your light so shine before men. You're to let the light Flow, the Lord flow through you. And now get, get to the main part. As Christians living for the Lord, a lamp, when it's burning, is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's giving light. It's, it's sending out light, and it's doing its job. And it does it well. But in the middle of doing its job... And it's, it's doing it right and doing everything it is supposed to be doing. Yet, little by little, that flame gets dim. And it gets dimmer and dimmer. And it's like, what's going on? Well, that wick, though it's burning and doing right, little by little, it begins to char. And it gets crusty. And as it gets crusty, that oil doesn't flow, doesn't get through it. And that wick has got to be trimmed. 
that crustiness, even though the wick is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, it still has to be trimmed in order to keep the light burning bright. This is the instructions for the light keepers of America. These are the people that man the lighthouses. Now, I don't know, and they probably aren't any remaining flame-driven lighthouses in America, but I don't know that maybe there is. But when the lighthouses used a real flame, these are the instructions that they had to go by. And it says the lamps, there were lives at stake. There were ships and lives at stake. And they had to do these to keep the light shining. So the ships would crash. The lamps shall be lighted punctually every day at sunset and extinguished at sunrise. The lamps shall be kept burning bright and clear every night from sunset to sunrise and in order that the greatest degree of light may be uniformly maintained, the wicks must be trimmed every four hours. It must have two. And light one, and then work on the, I, I don't know that, but I'm guessing that. Uh, they must be trimmed every four hours or oftener if necessary and clean glass chimneys fitted on and special care must be taken to cut the tops of the wicks exactly even to produce a flame of uniform shape free from smoky points. And they were to cut that uniformly every four hours to keep that a uniform, bright flame. And that lamp was doing its job but it still had to be trimmed. Have you trimmed your lamp lately? Have you taken inventory? Have you examined yourself? You're serving God. You're doing right. You're running your race. You're reading your Bible. You're praying. You're burning bright for the Lord. But has something gotten in there? Have you gotten hard? Have you gotten crusty? <laughs> Have you gotten to the point where the Lord just isn't flowing through like he did a while back? I don't know. But every lamp that's burning has got to be trimmed. And every Christian, sooner or later, has got to check themselves and examine themselves and see how they're doing. Let me ask you something. When is the last time you were under conviction? I mean, if we're growing in the Lord, none of us has arrived. Although I do like Google Maps. I really like Google Maps. You say, why? Because you put the address in, and when you get there, you pull in, and Google says, you have arrived. And every time it says that, I go, yes, glory to God. 
man, I, I just, I like it when it says that. I've arrived, you know. And, uh, and then I come back to reality. But, uh, <laughs> but if we're growing in the Lord, uh, sooner or later, brothers, sisters, when's the last time you were under conviction? When's the last time you repented? I mean, if we're growing in the Lord, you ought to be in virgin territory. What do you mean? I mean, you're more spiritual than you've ever been in your life if you're growing in the Lord. And uh, the Lord ought to be dealing with you about things. Uh, and maybe it was things he allowed in your life, you know, five years ago. But now you're more mature. Now you're, you've grown more. Now it's time and the Lord's going, all right, enough of that. And it's time to go. Hmm. Um, I just, I, I don't. Like use, and I'm not an example, but I'll just be honest with you. About three months ago, and the Lord had been dealing with me for a while, and about three months ago, I finally, it was a battle. Shouldn't have been, that was. But it was a battle. And about three months ago, by the grace of God, I quit YouTube. Said, done. Now I'll go there if I need an instruction on how to fix something on the RV or in the car, whatever. All right, but entertainment, done. I mean, the Bible says that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And a movie is an amusement that takes your mind off of God. Not only that, look at this. I've got to move on, but go to Psalms. Look at Psalms 11. And I would see this, and, and the Lord would deal with me. And look at Psalms 11, and look at verse 5. Psalms 11, 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked, and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Now, if you're saved, you're in the love of God, all right? I'm not saying God hates you, all right? But do you realize how much of entertainment is violent? That there's violence well, I just watched the old westerns. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's either violence or it's sex or innuendo. And it's both things. And I'd be watching that stuff. The Lord's going, what are you doing? Number one, you're wasting time. Number two, you don't need to be watching this. And he'd deal with me and deal with me. And I'm like, well, you know, it's a, it wasn't. It wasn't you know, it wasn't R and it wasn't the junk, you know, stuff like that. But it was little clips here and there, you know. I mean, what about the E-games? That's just, you know, all the guys are playing. They're full of violence. And it's like, by the grace of God, and I don't like shooting my mouth off because it would be like, oh, yeah, you know, but I'll, you know, fall back. But it's like the entertainment by the grace of God, just, no. And there was a conviction there that years ago didn't have, didn't have. And it's like, Lord, that's not pleasing you. And I had to, but how about you? Maybe that's not, maybe that's not it, but maybe there's something else, something else. When's the last time you trimmed your lamps? When's the last time you cut that stuff out and got that, uh, that light shining and the Lord flowing through you more and let it shine to a, a very dark world? Every lamp, though it's doing its job, sooner or later has got to be trimmed. You can't get out of it. It's all of us. It's all of us. 
And in order to get the Lord uh, moving through you and shining through you, you got to be trimmed. And in the age in which we live, you don't have to burn very bright to shine a lot. <laughs> what do you mean? It's dark. A little candle in the sunlight doesn't really look like much, doesn't attract much. But in the darkness of night, it can be seen a long way off. Uh, this is not the greatest illustration, but it works. Years ago in New York, there was a concert. It was a little before my time. But there was a very large concert in New York. It was called Woodstock. And it was a uh, debauchery, ungodly, drug-infested mess. And it was rock and roll uh, 24 hours, you know, and all these bands and stuff. There was a band there by the name of Credence Clearwater Revival, John Fogarty. And their slot was 3 a.m. And they were getting on stage, lights, the stage lit up. They're getting on stage, and John Fogart is at the edge, and he's looking out in the darkness, a sea of bodies. They're all asleep. And he's like, he's, he's just kind of, you know, looking at his band, you know, and they're setting up, and he, he's kind of looking out like, what are we doing? And he's looking out over the bodies in the darkness, way, way in the back. All of a sudden, he heard someone. And the guy yelled. He goes, it's all right, John. I'm listening. And in the back, there was this little flame. And he did lighter. <laughs> he lit that lighter, and he saw that thing. John Ford, he said, I played and sang for that one right there. What was that? Just a little light. In all that darkness, but it showed clear across that thing to where you could see it. You have no idea who is seeing your light in these very, very dark times. Years ago, there was a lady by the name of Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale basically started the nursing profession. She got her ladies together, and they went to the uh, Crimean War. In those days, there was no medical attention to the wounded soldiers. Many of them died a slow, agonizing death. They got there. The, the officers, the leaders were like, what are these women doing here? We don't need women. This is men's stuff. What are you doing here? And they wouldn't let them do anything. And they were getting frustrated. And finally, Florence uh, went up and said, can we at least clean? And they go, yeah, <laughs> help yourself. And the wounded soldiers, the building, it was, it, was, it was horrible conditions. And they got in there and began to clean and began to work and clean up little by little. And they're praying and God opened the door for them to begin to minister and medically treat the uh, wounded and on and on and on. And Florence became known as the lady with the lamp. She had a lamp, an oil lamp that she would carry in that dark building at night and in the day. And she'd go around and, and uh, she just, God had given her an ability and she'd see a soldier and knew that he was dying. And she'd go up with her lamp and she'd sit down by him and comfort him and pull out a piece of paper, a pad and a, a pen, an ink pen and say, you have a family back home? And he'd go, yeah, I, I got a wife and kids. What's her name? And she just talked to him. He goes, oh, it's so-and-so. And, and uh, she said, uh, are you saved? Do you know you're going to heaven? And 
she would win them to the Lord if they were lost. She'd comfort them if they were saved. And, and she'd say, is there anything else? Would you like, what, what do you want me to write down for your wife, for your children? And they'd say, tell them I love them. And I'll see them in glory. And I'll miss them. And she'd write it down. She'd minister, it seemed like tirelessly, to soldier after soldier. And her light, not only from that lamp, but her life shone very bright. When Florence and her workers came into a camp, it got that the morale of the soldiers just, just got greater. And they cheered and, and just, they're here, they're here. And God used her in a very great way. Have you trimmed your light, your lamp lately? There's a lighthouse. On the hillside, an old song says, that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead us home. If it wasn't for... The lighthouse, tell me, where would this ship be? Let's pray. Father, I pray, God, that you'd help us to examine ourselves. God, if we're getting hard, Lord, we may be right in the middle doing the job you want us to do, being good lamps for you. But oh God, help us to trim them, to have that light shining bright that Lord you would be flowing through us to a lost dying world. God, help us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Okay. Didn't take long, but it sure stuck me in the heart. The Bible does still say, let your light so shine, and it's not always about you, it's others might see. Can they see Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory? We're living in, Brother Ken's already here, I'm not going to even touch the message. That was a great message. It was a timely message because this whole thing that's going around today does not eliminate you nor exempt you from letting them see Jesus Christ in you. Everybody's running for hope, running for help, and we know where it's at. Can they see Jesus Christ in you? Or have you cut out your light? I talked to him a little bit today, and sometimes we allow events or stumbling blocks in our life to steal our joy. I wonder, have you lost the joy of your salvation? I'm saved. Didn't look like you're really enjoying it. I mean, are you? Does somebody else see Jesus Christ in you? When I got saved, that was the most exhilarating thing ever happened in my life. I was a little Catholic altar boy, served Holy Communion, worked with the priest, drank his wine. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. You go down, there was a cage, and they had the wine in there. But... All that nonsense going on, I could not believe that God, just envision this for just a moment, sent his son and said, I want to die for you, that you can have life. And all he says, let Jesus Christ be seen in me, the hope 
This world is losing hope right now. It's in trouble. And our Savior is getting ready to step out and say, come on, boys, let's go. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of things you can mess with, but those are God's chosen people. They better leave them alone. Amen. But you know what? We still need to let Jesus Christ be seen in us. He wants to shine through us, and we need to let that happen. I'm not going to challenge you. I'm not going to do anything. I think enough of it was said. I'm sitting there like, well, I'm bleeding now. Where's the bandage? Sometimes we allow things. David. David allowed things to get in his life. And um, we look at them more than we look at the one who took care of it. Where cometh my help? My help cometh from... That's why I say, why don't we just start praising God again, letting Jesus Christ, your co-workers, you don't have to say anything to them. Let Jesus Christ be seen in you. Don't act like them. Don't respond like they do. I'll, I'll stop because I'm going to let you go home. I know you guys have to get up. Andrew Soche, we both know him. When I worked at Rogers Construction at West Florida Hospital, remember the hospital just up from the, the school and the church, and Andrew would cut students' hair, and if they didn't have money, he didn't care. He cut it, and he did a really great job. He was a welder, and every time he would, brother, I don't know if you ever got around that much, but every time he would have his lunch, he'd have that thing. He'd pull out Brother Chuck, he'd sit his bucket down, and out come his Bible. And you know what he would do? He wouldn't stand there and rah, 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 but he'd just start reading his Bible out loud and praising God with that Bible. And some people, this guy's crazy. No, he was letting his light shine. He was letting Jesus Christ be seen in him. Listen, we're in a world of darkness. We need to let that light come from us. It's his light, and he sh wants to shine through us. And as I said, I'm going to leave it alone. I appreciate the message. I really do. I've asked Brother Ken to preach for us on Sunday. I hope you'll get somebody, invite somebody, try to get them to come. Uh, are y'all leaving for a honeymoon anywhere? Saturday. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hope you're enjoying. I'm just kidding with them. Brethren, that, was, that message smacked me. Because sometimes we allow situations in our life, and I'm going to go home and trim mine. Okay, anybody got anything before we leave? There's books out there. You need to look at them. They're, they're good books. They're short. There's uh, hats out there. Let everybody know what kind of Bible you use. If you have a Bible. <laughs> All right. Brother Jesse, why don't you dismiss us, sir?